Before history is written, it's played. Before it's frozen in time, it's fought one shift at a time. Before it's etched in silver, it's carved in ice. What happens next will last forever. The Stanley Cup Final on ABC and ESPN Plus begins Saturday. I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on Earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on earth. Bop, 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 boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, and I'm JT Timmons. And we are here with a ghost mail. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. You've got ghost mail. Oh, you've yeah, got we're, ghost mail. We're, we're, sorry, we're all waiting. Sorry, Chris I, is just I, over here like... <laughs> I got puppy brain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chris has a new puppy. I have a new puppy. And it makes everything about 20 to 25 minutes later. Like, <laughs> everything I do takes an extra 25 minutes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it gets easier, but it's oh, really yeah. cute. Yeah, it is a very cute puppy. Very cute puppy. Yes, but yeah. we have a ghost mail for y'all, and we're going to do a few announcements before we get into it. Uh, first off, we have a couple more days left to vote for Connect Savannah, uh, if you are new here. Uh, basically, Connect Savannah is a competition of sorts uh, here in Savannah, as you can imagine by the mm-hmm. name, um, where pretty much you can vote for the uh, c- businesses and people that you would uh, deem as the best people in Savannah for whatever category. Um, so we're up for a few different things. We're up for best local actress. We're up for best local theater production, best local theater director. We're up for best podcast, best local TikTok, like all the good things. Um, JT's going to put up yep, a, I just did. a uh, little uh, thing for you guys to see all the categories. Uh, voting ends on March 6th, so get your votes in. You can vote every single day, and we really appreciate it. It helps out a ton, uh, especially as small business owners. It's a really big uh, honor to get when yes. you are living in the city. So uh, definitely go ahead and vote. But other and if you don't, if you only want to vote for one thing, vote for best local, local podcast. podcast, the most yes. haunted city on earth. That's yes. the that's the shining star for us. Absolutely. Um, and so next on the agenda, we have a few new para junkies to thank. Whoop, whoop. So we want to thank Alexis, Sarah Jane, Pamela, Jennifer, Robin, and Dedrick. I want to I want to mm. give a special shout out to Sarah Jane. She comments on almost every single one of our uh, YouTube videos, just oh. saying what she thinks, and that just helps so much. Excellent. And- and her amount is in pounds, so I want to. Oh, and so I'm like Sarah Jane. From where across are you? the pond. From across the pond. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you go to the Willy Wonka experience? <gasps> <laughs> if you haven't, okay. First off, I'm that's, obsessed. This is important information. If you haven't seen the Willy Wonka experience in Glasgow, not paranormal related at all, but a great. Yes. Great laugh. It tickles go me on greatly. X, go on X and just do Willy Wonka Glasgow and one hour of your life is gone because is, you will just enjoy it so much. It is the most bizarre thing. <laughs> the, my favorite part, comment below what your favorite part about the Willy Wonka yeah. experience <laughs> As you go down that rabbit hole. It's going to be one of the hashtags no. like on yes. YouTube. <laughs> my, my personal favorite part was the unknown. There is a uh, video on X where it's like it's like Willy Wonka and he's like oh no it's the unknown which is an evil chocolate maker that lives in the walls <laughs> which I'm like where what? so many questions why AI that's Literally. why where did it get that though that's not even like a part of Willy Wonka well, lore the funny thing is the fact that AI it was like uh unknown you know it was like, yeah. I can't 
can't even come up with anything. Yeah. I don't know what to call this thing, uh, but it is obviously a Death Eater from uh, the Harry Potter books uh, yes. mixed with a little Doctor yeah. Doom and maybe uh, <laughs> the Ozzy, villain from Scooby Man, Scooby Doo Two, and Ozzy Osbourne hair, <laughs> and with Ozzy Osbourne hair, it's it's bizarre. It's nuts. It's, it's bizarre. At, at the end of the video, though, the best part is a child crying. <laughs> Multiple children crying. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you've you've created a creepy, creepy thing that comes out from behind a yeah. Walmart mirror. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh. And they didn't even get good candy out of it. They get no. one jelly bean and a quarter cup of Tesco lemonade. Yes. One jelly bean a treat does not make. No. <sighs> so it's so good. So definitely go check out the Willy Wonka. That's just experience. like every. That's like the epitome of my humor. I feel like just that. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that poorly executed attractions. <laughs> yes. Well, we own a, a, a an immersive experience that's not poorly executed at all, and it's just so funny seeing like something like that. Exactly. It's just like. Oh, just it's knowing what goes into them. It's just hilarious. All the things that they just couldn't do because they were like scammers that were not prepared. Yeah, and those poor actors. <laughs> and they they showed up and they were like, because we watched the um, the video that the Willy Wonka made. Um, and they got hired on a Thursday. The event was on Saturday. Ooh. Oof. And he had. They gave him a fifteen. Page... Was it a charity thing? No, was it... <laughs> no, no. It was. It was. No it was redeeming for, qualities. for so profit. Painful for profit. And, <laughs> Forty-five bucks a ticket. Mm. And he mm -mm -mm. was saying <laughs> that they were supposed to get paid for this, obviously. And they showed up, and they're like, "We're definitely not getting paid." <laughs> um, <laughs> but they're like, "But they're for the children. We'll stick it out and try to give them, in his quote, an experience." <laughs> and it was an experience, a lesson, and <laughs> not being taken in by charlatans. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So go All down right. that rabbit hole Do after you listen with. to this. <laughs> Um, but yes, okay, so we're going to start out with a ghost mail from Krista. Krista. So, hello, Madison, Chris, and JT. I've been waiting a while to send you the story um, because I only started listening to the podcast in June of 2023. Well, welcome aboard, Krista. Yeah, welcome aboard. And I wanted to get close to being caught up before I sent it in. Please forget the length. I feel like it's important to provide you a little bit of background to get the best context of the story as possible. Just a disclaimer here. We always want all the details. Yeah, we prefer know? it. Yes. <laughs> yes. So never feel bad, people, for sending all the details. Um, but yes, I think that you all will enjoy it because it mentions things that have come up frequently on the podcast. The military, love, and a good old-fashioned ghost story. Ooh. All of our favorite things. We love for a ghost story. Oh, but yeah. before we get to the ghost part of the story, here's a little bit of background about me so it all makes sense. Uh, for context, I am an army doctor and consider myself to be what I would call a spooky skeptic. I grew up in an environment that was heavily religious and anything that would remotely be viewed as outside of that, for example, wanting a pretty crystal rock as a child, was, <laughs> all, was always considered witchcraft. Because of this, my sister and um, has always, do, 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 do. oh yeah, my sister and I ignored the spookier sides of ourselves, but have begun to embrace and explore them in the last five-ish years. My sister has always had prophetic dreams, which feel distinctly different to her than her normal dreams. And for me, there has always been the running joke that if I want something, I can magically make it happen. My sister is convinced it's manifestation, but I think it's a combination of determination and maybe a, sp a sprinkle of intuition. Even though I do have some witchy practice in my life now, I always try to find a scientific or rational explanation for things before I assume the supernatural. My now partner, will, who will come up in the story, also grew up in a similar environment and now has more agnostic views of the world and is definitely a skeptic. Here's where our story begins. In 2021, about a year and a half before me and my partner met, we both went through devastating ends of long-term relationships. My partner was still active, uh, active duty army and he had been sent on a tasker overseas. His mission was cut short because the sergeant major he worked for went through a very serious mental health crisis. Because the team was so small, my partner was responsible for keeping him safe and alive until he got his, uh, him back to their duty station in the U.S. 
While this was all happening on the mission, he was healing his own broken heart by laying in bed at night and envisioning the kind of person he wanted to bring into his life who would love him the way that he deserved. Funny enough, all those qualities ended up being exactly how he describes me. Was it manifestation? Maybe. But it is a loving piece of the story. My partner was able to get the sergeant major back home, and when he had recovered a bit, he thanked him for taking care of him in his time of need and told him he hoped he could one day find a meaningful way to repay the favor. My partner said no favor was owed, but his sergeant major was insistent. But before he was able to repay it, he sadly passed away. At the same time this was happening to my partner, I was also healing my broken heart and getting ready to select a new military duty station. My sister called me to tell me that she had one of her dreams and that I needed to move to the base that was near where she lived in Washington because she was absolutely convinced I'd find the love of my life there. I was skeptical, and by this point, I had learned to be content alone and didn't feel uh, I needed a relationship. Therapy works wonders. <laughs> the stars aligned, and I was assigned to that base near my sister. Before I moved, I remembered her dream, and I felt hopeful for a new beginning and made a spell jar for love to see what the universe had to offer. I moved to Washington and bought a home shortly thereafter. If you're familiar with how the military works, one of the biggest tasks you have to do when you get to a new location is get issued all of your army gear, which is an annoyingly time-consuming and lengthy process. I got all my gear before I moved into my house and immediately stored it all in my spare bedroom because I didn't have a place for it yet. I also put the spell jar I had made in that room as well. This will be important later. Pretty immediately after moving into the house, me and my sister both noticed that the spare room I was storing all my gear in felt distinctly different than the rest of the house. It was colder, had odd smells that would come and go with no origin, and every time we would walk into the room, we would get immediate sense that you weren't supposed to be in there. So it was common to just grab whatever I needed and then leave the room in a hurry. I even found myself apologizing to the empty room because it felt like I was intruding in some way. Of course, the joke started that it was the haunted room, and that's what we referred to it as. Around this time, I actually started listening to your podcast as well, because I was, it was something to enjoy while I began all of the home renovations on the house. It's a very fond and warm memory I have, and I'm grateful to you all um, uh, to, uh, that you all kept me company during those projects. That's very sweet. Thank you, Krista. Um, this is where we get to our love story. The month that I moved to Washington was the month that my partner retired from the Army, which is sublime universal timing since he was enlisted and I'm an officer. It's illegal under military law for officers and enlisted persons to date. Hmm. That's true. We met uh, a month later, and from the first moment we saw each other, there was an immediate connection that neither of us could explain. I'm a realist and have always been skeptical of people who say it was love at first sight, but after finding him, I have to eat my words. Aww. <laughs> um, our first date felt like we were both catching up with a friend and we'd known our whole lives and hadn't seen for a while. Until that night, I was honestly content with never getting married, and after our date, I sent a text to my sister saying, I just met my husband. The more we learned about each other, the more coincidences we found. Some uh, same experiences, being in the same place at the same time over the years, oddly specific similarities between us, etc. And we both laughed about the universe finally deciding it was time for us to meet. And we've been incredibly happy together since. Pretty soon after we started dating, we were spending a night in, uh, in at my house because I needed to go to an early morning event w uh, with work that required me to pack a rack sack. Um, my partner volunteered to pack for me since I was cooking dinner. He asked me where all my army gear would be that I would need to put in the pack, and I directed him to the haunted room. <laughs> he had already, uh, he had already knew, knew this is what I called it, and we laughed it off. A couple minutes later, he came out of the room with all of the gear, started laying it out, and then he got eerily quiet. I came out of the kitchen, I asked him what was wrong, and uh, saw he was holding one of my army canteens. He asked me where I had gotten it, and I told him it was from the issue facility and had lived in my haunted room since the day I moved in. He showed me the canteen, which had a name and the last four of a social security number on it and I, that I had never noticed. 
He then told me the story of the sergeant major he had overseas, and to his disbelief, it was his name and social on it, and the canteen had belonged to him. We both were and still are stunned over such a huge coincidence. My partner and skeptic, or the skeptic, is now convinced that me coming into his life was his sergeant major finally repaying him for the favor he felt he owed that from um, before he died. And I have to say, all the events that had to align for this to happen have me believing it's more than coincidence as well. After the initial shock settled in, my partner and I decided to try and offer some closure, and he was able to give the canteen to a friend who was still in the Army so that they could pass it to the sergeant major's widow. Oh, and one last thing. The witch jar I had made for now sits on my partner's desk, and after we took the canteen out of the haunted room, it stopped being haunted. I hope you enjoyed our ghost love story. Big fan of you all. And I feel like you're a part of the story, too, since I was listening to the podcast while all of this was happening. Aw. Best, Krista. Thanks, Krista. That was a great story. That was a wonderful story. What a great story. And it really illustrates the one thing that, and we've said it before, we get kind of off track about it, but the vast majority of ghost stories are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The vast majority of them are loving and sweet and uh, and just nods to people's connection and connectivity. Mm -hmm. So, no, wonderful ghost story. Great. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think the uh, sentiment that you guys were saying is that the sergeant major, you know, brought you two together. I, I could totally see that being a thing, you know, sometimes. Absolutely. Because it that is a major coincidence, to no, say the it's, least. It, it, like, yeah. it's, it's insane. Uh, Wild coincidence. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty incredible. And so, um, yeah, I mean, how cool would that be, though? You know, he's like, this is my way of repaying you. I bring you a lovely person. Here you go. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I love it. You know, it's um, and it and it, Chris is right. You know, not all ghost stories have to be all doom and gloom and demon, demony. Um, but <laughs> I know it's demony mu- fresh, mm. demony fresh as much as JT would love them to always be demony. No, no, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, no, that was, that was solid. Sweet. It, it really is. I love a good. I'm a romantic. So. Yeah, same. I like. Mm-hmm. I love a good ghost love story. Yeah, I mean, not that you two are ghosts, but like you know, usually, it's like the my favorite stories are the ones where like the loved one comes back and they like retrieve their dying loved one, and those are always fun. But this is cute because it's like ghost brought you together. Yeah, it's a ghost mm-hmm. matchmaker. It's a ghost matchmaker. Ghost matchmaker. And um, very happy for you too. And. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, Krista, for listening, and thank you for sending in the story, because this was yeah. a, nice, a nice way to start off our Thursday morning, you know? Absolutely. So. All we, right, thank you, Krista. Yes. All right. What so, we got next? So next we have Megan. Megan. So, hello, my name is Megan. 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 <laughs> I have your jacket. <laughs> <laughs> How many, I times, love it. how many times do you think Megan has gotten that in their life? Uh, you know? I don't know. Ask Chris. We consistently do this. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Megan! <laughs> Megan, you forgot your jacket. Megan, I have oh. your Sour Patch Kids. No, no, no. Actually, okay. That's, that's Chris's Megan. Uh, yeah. If, if you ever want to lure Chris's Megan, <laughs> yes. just leave a trail of Sour Patch Kids and that's, she'll she'll come she running. Will fall, she will she will follow <laughs> that, right into that anywhere. Right. Yes. <laughs> it could be it could be a pool of lava. She's going into it because there might be Sour Patch Kids. Yes. That's why I keep the house stocked so she doesn't look out. <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't have to do any external. There's, there's no uh, luring. And, and, yes. and no external searching. There's plenty of Sour Patch Kids at all. <laughs> and to be more exact, the Sour Patch watermelons and the Sour Patch hearts that come out every uh, Valentine's yes. Day are the prizes. Those, Sour oh, Patch yeah. kids by themselves, yeah, they're okay, but no, the 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 specialty. Those Sour are Patch the candles. high high tier, right? Mm-hmm. The high tier, high tier Sour Patch kids. Oh yeah, but so this is uh, this this is from uh, Marie, um, Megan. Megan. Okay, and um, she said, uh, "Here, uh, here's my ghost story. Your quietest para junkie." Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yes. So you have ghost. to whisper. Yes. It's ASMR ghost story. I live in Maine. I yes. hope you like my story. Maine. <laughs> I love Maine. I also love Maine. Yeah. If Madison started doing ghost ASMR, we'd probably make a like ton of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot more money. Mm-hmm. Ghost the, story ASMR. And, and then the shadow came out and it went. 
fall over. And stop tapping the fucking. I mean the friggin'. <laughs> okay, we got it. Let's go. <laughs> I screamed. <laughs> Y'all are such goobers, dude. So yes. All right, Maine. I live in Maine, and I hope you like my story. I'm sure we will. Um, I have always had a weird feeling when I enter uh, certain homes, hospitals, and other buildings. It always seemed like I was being watched or that there was a presence in a room I couldn't see. Once and a great uh, while I hear things, for example, movement in a house when no one is there or when I am focused on a task, I can hear talking slash conversations from far away. But when I notice, I will try to focus on the talking and it will disappear. I've gotten so used to it that I no longer freak out about it. This is very important to my story. I have many stories because of these feelings and hearing them talk. If you want to hear some of my favorites, I am willing to tell them at any, uh, I am willing to tell them at another time. Yes, send them in. We always love ghost stories. So also, I don't know if this is important, but I had a friend in high school who told me she could see people's auras. When I asked what color she saw as mine, she told me that mine was clear. Oh. Interesting. Oh. Very interesting. Okay. So that, um, just as a side note, uh, clear auras mean that you can be seen by the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. Oh. That is something that is uh, uh, discussed um, because your aura in many ways masks you from a lot of Hmm. spiritual entities. And so the more um, opaque you are, the more... Um, hidden you are and the clearer you are the more easily you're seen and being able to be seen by ghosts does not always translate into being able to see ghosts and that can cause a lot of calamity in people's lives exactly dang interesting though that is very interesting she sounded confused by the color so I asked is that a bad color (laughs) (laughs) and then she told me no but she had never seen that color come from someone before I know nothing about auras or how they work slash mean. I just thought it was interesting. Anyway, back to the story at hand. I would like to preface that I am not religious, but my grandmother was. So I'm still confused by this experience. I should start with some weird things that happened before the main incident that I want to talk about. About two or three years ago, my 85-year-old grandmother at the time started telling my family that she was seeing my grandfather and a little girl in her home, Hmm. which is an old farmhouse. I swear these farmhouses, they they just be attracting these ghosts. But my grandfather died back in 1998, and there has never been a little girl that has died in the house to our knowledge. My family has lived in the home and other farmhouse and another and the other farmhouse on the property since 18, the 1890s. Both homes stood on the property before my family bought it. So there is a chance that a child died on the property, but we will never know. My grandmother had never talked about seeing anyone in the house before that point. My grandmother had lived by herself in the home since 2003. So when she started to talk about seeing and talking to my grandfather out of the blue, we all started to get a bad feeling. Hmm. We were worried that her life might be coming to an end. And she was becoming more confused. So my father checked on her every day. She would tell my mother and me a lot that she needed to leave the light in the stairway to one of the upstairs bedrooms on because the little girl liked to play up there at night. My mother thought she was starting to mix up memories of me coming down to see her at night when I lived with my parents in the apartment in the back of the house when I was two. The only thing that bothered me about this explanation was my parents and I slept in the upstairs bedrooms on the other side of the house, nowhere near the stairs she was talking about almost 20 years later. When I asked her about me coming down the stairs to watch the movies with her at night back in 2002 when I was, uh, when I was two, uh, she was able to tell me the correct staircase I would have gone down to get to the living room. That creeped me out further. When she st- talked about her... Um, talking and seeing my grandfather, she would tell my aunt about a conversation she had with him about things that were happening in the present. My family would brush them off and say she must just be confused. In early June 2021, she became sick and was in a hospital for a week. She was later transferred to a nursing home for almost a month. When we got, uh, when she got better, they sent her home that July. My family decided that it was not safe to leave her home alone, so she moved in with my aunt. Both of my aunts would take care of her during the day because they are both retired. And at night, my brother and I would watch her. I had just graduated college and my brother had just graduated high school, so we took up the night shift to uh, watch her. One night, 
on week two of the night shift at my aunt's house, I was sitting in my grandmother's bedroom at the foot of her bed on my computer. At this point, she had calmed down and she was sleeping. The room is small and overall the house is pretty small. So I could hear very little things um, that happened in the house at that hour. At about midnight, the TV was on in the room with its volume on very low with almost a whisper. Um, I started to hear a conversation between a man and a woman. Like when I explained earlier, it was only when I was not focused on the outside world, but when I was not focused, um, uh, but when I was not focused, it was louder than I had ever experienced before. I could hear someone talking in the living room or kitchen. I could not make out what they were saying like normal, but it was loud enough for me to tell they were having a pleasant but firm conversation. Like if they were discussing something. It freaked me out a bit, so I got up the first time to go look in the living room and kitchen area to check it out. There was no one there, and when I looked outside at the front of the house, there weren't even any lights on at the neighbors. I returned to the bedroom. I did notice that on the TV, there was a man and a woman talking at that point. I chalked it up to, uh, to the TV being louder than I had thought. I muted it and went back to my computer. After an hour later, I heard the conversation again just as loud as before. This time it sounded important. I freaked out again and turned the sound back on the TV. I would hear it a few more times throughout the night. By the time my aunt woke up that morning, I had completely forgotten about it. The next day, when I was back to see my grandmother during the day, she told me that my grandfather had come to see her and she had sat in the chair or and he had sat in the chair next to her bed. She also mentioned that one of her sisters had come to see her. Both of her sisters were dead at this point. This made me remember the voices I had heard the night before. Um, it kind of scared me a little, not going to lie, because I have always made excuses for the sounds and talking um, I had heard throughout my life. I tried to shake it off and go on with my, my life. A week later, I was doing the night shift at my grandmother's bedside when I heard voices again. They sounded the same as the ones I had heard the week prior. The only difference was they were having a calm conversation instead. I heard it at least three different times throughout the night. That morning, I decided to tell my aunt about the voices, and my aunt got excited when I told her, and she said that she had heard the voices of a man and a woman the second night my grandmother had started living there. She had figured that it must have come from outside the house. When I told her that it sounded uh, like it was coming from inside the house, she got freaked out. My aunt has never heard voices in that house before or since. After my grandmother went to live in another nursing home bef uh, because she started to decline too much for us to take care of her on our, our own, my aunt and I had told the family about the voices we had heard. My mother asked if we were, um, if we were hearing her guardian angels. My mother is religious. The, my aunt scoffed because she didn't believe in anything like that, but I didn't know. My grandmother died later that December. To this day, we have never heard anything in my aunt's house since. Hmm. Thank you for hearing my story. It is uh, a common one in my family to talk about when it comes to ghosts or spooky things in general. I have other ghost stories from my other side of the family, like me seeing my other grandmother's dead sister when I was three in their mm. old spooky house on the river, as well as more from um, the house my grandmother and now my parents, um, brother, and I live in. Sadly, no sighting of the little girl lately, though. If you guys are interested in other sort of stories, let me know. And also, stay spooky, y'all. Cool. Yeah. Um, Again, kind of a warm story. Yeah. Really yeah. When it comes down to it. Uh, and a, a little bit of a loving story, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it had that earmark of the loved one coming back for, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, a beloved. Um, and it's probably worth noting that some spirits can come back any age they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's possible that the little girl was um, your great aunt, your, mm -hmm. your grandmother's mm -hmm. sister, presenting as a little girl. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I always cited was um, that Lincoln's town, uh, Abraham Lincoln's um, childhood home mm -hmm. is haunted by a spirit that everyone assumes is Abe Lincoln, but many people see him as a young man. Mm. And um, and just that alone is, oh, well, how is he haunting that and the White House simultaneously? Yeah. That's perfectly normal for a spirit to be able to be in multiple places because time doesn't really matter when you're dead. Right. You know, it doesn't have uh, time and space are not variables for the for the ghost world, um, which allows for things like 
um, oh, uh, the Forsyth Inn. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Forsyth Inn ghost is seen as a young woman, uh, a girl. Uh, but she lived to be an old mm-hmm. woman and died an old woman. Okay. But her spirit is almost exclusively seen oh. as the young girl she was, mm-hmm. and and the traumatic event that occurred right. to her. Well, and so, I, th- I think yeah. with Lottie specifically too, it's um, I think her brain broke after that right. in a way, and sure. so I think in her mind she never advanced exactly. Or yeah, and and it could also just be a, a time of such high note and high you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, character establishing moment, right? <laughs> that 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 becomes the thing that you you revert to. Um, so yeah, it makes sense. Uh, there's a lot of times when people will go, <clears throat> but uh, a young child never died here. It's like, well, I'm, there's a chance. I'm not saying that that's what's happening. I'm just saying that there's a chance that you're dealing with a spirit that is identifying as a child when it's not. Because we've also heard stories of. Older people, when the child died, people seeing someone that they imagined was mm-hmm. the older version of the child who died. And that is a, a matter of imagination on the part of the spirit trying to um, trying to grow within its confines. Sure. So so there's a lot of interesting variables. And, and, and that's probably a, a, an open discussion for another time is, oh, yeah, uh, ghosts can present as they see themselves or at, or, or as they can't get away from mm-hmm. <laughs> the identity of. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's that's really interesting, though. It is super interesting. And, you know, um, I, it's always an interesting conversation, too, when you ask people, like, what age do you feel? Right. Um, because mm-hmm. you can be, like, your body, your vessel, your meat suit, if you will. It could be, you know... 80 years old but internally you can feel 24 you know um and i think that translates into the paranormal because i think people pick their favorite age Um, yeah you have an avatar yeah you know you it's 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 you know i'm always surprised when i look in the mirror like whoa who is that that? (laughs) that's weird (laughs) um so yeah i i understand that fully yeah exactly so um i i completely agree maybe the little girl is a past loved one who is just like I feel seven years old. That right. was my, or, or that know. was my favorite time. Yeah. You know, exactly. and that's how I want to appear, and that's how I want to, you know, experience the afterworld. So, exactly, yeah. for sure, for sure. Um, and on the other side of it, where you were saying um, your mom was like, "Oh, were you hearing her guardian angels?" And I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I, it's, it's so. Sometimes loved ones can come back in a guardian angel spirit guide. persona if you will it's not as common though um and so i don't think it was guardian angels um and yeah that's uh, it's tricky terminology yeah when it comes down to it because a lot of people do refer to familial like family members who come back as guardian angels but something to, to to take into consideration is that angels are not human right you know, um, and that's something that that a lot of people kind of, and, and we've muddied it with a lot of movies. Uh, we've muddied it with <laughs> no, a lot of storytelling. Fair. That the idea is that angels are like we graduate to becoming angels. Like we die and we go on, and we become angels. Angels are actually another species. They're another. Um, they they don't. They're not humans. Mm-hmm. And and to the point, the reason why. Uh, there's so many, so much lore around what happened to the angels and the revolt in heaven and things like that was because angels were kind of a first go mm-hmm. <laughs> right. at, at entities. Um, and, uh, and in their, um, in their makeup, they are, they're designed to serve and only serve. So anytime that they broke from serving, they were, they were committing the only sin an angel can commit, which is to not serve. And that, that's kind of supposedly where free will came from right was the notion that oh i've i've created these these beings and they don't have free will they hmm. must serve and if they make any choices that are contrary they're immediate they immediately fall yep so then it, it's like oh uh beings deserve free will and of course mm-hmm. that makes uh, a lot of stories about angels being disgruntled <laughs> right come about because when the angels saw that humans had free will and they did not it became kind of an issue. 
and they also look AI generated. So it's yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they are a revolving series of wheels with eyeballs and wings. Yeah. So um, anybody who thinks they're going to come down looking like a Christmas tree topper, no. no. They're more likely going to look like a Christmas tree on fire. Yeah, that's true. Well, and also um, <laughs> any kind of angel encounter people have had, you usually know it. Um, even as a guardian angel, like they can um, be present, but... Uh, angels speak in a different language. Um, if, a notion. Yeah. If you're going to hear them, a lot of times you're not going to recognize what they're saying. Um, if you Some even hear say them. that it sounds like music. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. like it, it, it doesn't sound, it's, it's like orchestration or, or it doesn't make sense as, a, as, as words. Exactly. Mm. Right. Like they're not going to speak in like the sounds of like a normal human conversation because yeah. they're not human. In fact, like, there is a... Um, there's a, uh, an angel specifically designed to speak to humans, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the Metatron. So the Metatron, mm -hmm. Metatron's is, horrifying. It, it is actually geared so that our perception of the Word of God can be processed. So it speaks. It speaks human. Yeah. Um, and 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 the the choir of angels that Metatron is a part of can. And are the only ones that interact with humans. You know, they, they're the ones who are like, be not afraid. And they're yes. like, I'm a little afraid. It's like, no, be not afraid. But you look like that. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. And people who have encountered Metatron, you know it. You yep. know it. Like, it is, a, it is an intense, yeah, um, yeah. intense energy. So much so that Metatron had to um, distract Moses with a burning bush. <laughs> So that Moses' brain didn't melt out of his ear. Yeah. So, you know, there's a burning bush talking to him, and he's like, I can accept burning bush talking to me. And Metatron's over there going, yep. All right. Well, thank you, Megan. Uh, yes. We have room for one more, and I have it right here, Maddie. Oh, cool. I can read it. All it's, right. Uh, it's a shorter one. Sounds good. Um, this person uh, would, would like to remain anonymous. Okay. So this is... Anonymity. Yes. I'm an anonymity. Yeah, I'm an Hey guys, I found the podcast while Old Gods was on hiatus, and I needed something for my commute to nursing school. I don't know what Old Gods Excellent. is. It's I uh, say it's a Lovecraftian podcast. podcast oh. I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. And I, I'm only going from, yeah. from 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 the name Old Gods, although it might just be um, about uh, pagan uh, pantheon and mm. uh, and other mythological things. I recently graduated from my program, passed my licensure, and started my first nursing job on night shift. Uh -oh. I haven't had any experiences, but we joke a lot about the bumps in the night and nurses having definitely had experiences there and the previous location. I'll keep y'all posted. What I wanted to tell y'all about is an experience my mother, a nurse in long-term care for many years, told me several years ago. Ooh, I like mm. that. My mother had been caring for a gentleman in facility for a while. He was eventually placed on hospice care while still living at this facility. This meant that the hospice nurse came and made regular rounds on this individual and possibly others under the care at the facility. Hospice made sure that uh, they had what they needed in place for comfort. But otherwise, the staff at the facility were tasked with the day-to-day -day care. While my mother was sitting at the nurse, nurse's station completing uh, charting and preparing for shift change, she got a frantic call from one of her aides to come to this room quickly. My mom said she arrived, her patient, uh, when she arrived, her patient was lying on the floor and she knew before she even searched for a pulse or listened to him that he was gone. She turned to the aide and another nurse in the uh, another nurse in the doorway to ask them to page hospice and the doctor so her and a couple others could stay with the patient and continue providing care. When she turned back around to uh, jump back in, he sat straight up. Mm. Lord, mm. oh. She said back complete, his back was completely straight, hinged 90 degrees at his hips, sat straight up, and took a huge gasping breath. 
She had never had something quite like this happen before. She immediately started doing her assessment while waiting on hospice and the doctor to arrive. She said he wouldn't speak about what happened or what he uh, might have saw, but he looked very frightened. This story still gives me chills even as I type it out. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the use of that button mm-hmm. right there, Lord. Uh, she has plenty of stories about patients talking about deceased loved ones coming to visit at the end of life and sometimes angels. Uh, and another uh, longtime patient in the same facility that when she started counting, they could expect a death. Anyways, I love the show and hope to be caught up soon. Very nice. Wow. That actually happened to me. What? I actually had a body set up, uh, a dead body. And when I, of course, naturally screamed. <laughs> um, and 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 talk to um, one of the um, medical professionals nearby. They they say that it's not that uncommon. Um, sometimes mm-hmm. um, what's really happening is um, the impulses that are sent from your brain are sluggishly moving through a system that is dying. Mm-hmm. And some of those impulses can cause all kinds of spasms, all kinds of movements. And in this case, the person. Not only sat up, he sat straight up, ninety degrees, and turned. Mm-hmm. You know, just the took a big old breath. Turned, and um, and as far as breathing and things like that, dead bodies make all kinds of creepy noises. Right. They gurgle, they burp, they fart, they make all these strange sounds, um, and uh, a lot of that is, uh, you know, just the the natural um, way that the body sh- sh- shuts down. You know, mm-hmm. all the systems are shutting down. Things like gasps. And movement are like your brain sends out panic, panic signals mode, yeah. through the body, and the nerves that have not completely been shut down or or they respond to the panic. And one of the biggest panics in death is, of course, not, not breathing. Yeah, you know, uh, gasping for breath, gasping for air, things like that. So um, I remember being so distinctly freaked out by it, but then alternately so very relieved to hear oh that's normal Mm -hmm. however over the years i've always thought well that's probably what they just tell people who get really really freaked out (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. that that may be totally false but it it it, it satisfied my Mm heebie-jeebie you know experience uh to, to to hear somebody say you know that's 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 not abnormal i mean it is abnormal but it it's possible that you're dealing with um kind of a uh, right before rigor mortis mm-hmm. situation, right? Sure, you know, sure. the, the muscles are all contracting; they're all coming in. And if the last impulse sent from your brain was to, you know, lift your arm, your arm might go straight up mm-hmm. because you're reaching for something. Might be like a delayed response, right, right? Exactly. You know, because it's moving much slower. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, nothing's circulating. The the information isn't moving the your same body's way it's failing. supposed to. It's your like a catastrophic failing. right. Exactly. Meltdown. So you know, um, who knows what kind of electric pulses might sh- shoot out of your brain in the moments after your death. I like um, to think it's paranormal. That's well, that's I, that's less interesting. It is paranormal <laughs> in the sense yeah. the person's dead and moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a rule to being dead. Yeah, and it's don't move. Ooh. Yeah, when you're dead, you've lost the permission to move. Yeah, <laughs> if you if you move after death, there's a penalty. Yes, <laughs> people might chop your head off. Right. So just keep that in mind. If you die, don't move. Don't move. Just it will alarm people. <laughs> But I've heard that too, where, um, you know, because I live on mortician TikTok a lot. Oh, sure. Um, so it's, um, yeah, where it's uh, the gases build up and sometimes it causes um, contractions. Yeah, contractions yeah. and things like that. Um, gasping, I've heard, is not uncommon as well, you know, because it's. Well, like, and that could just be like a vacuum happening inside. Right. So it's not a gasp of air as much as it is things settling and moving and. Yeah. But and if there was air in the lungs. Oh, yeah. So an. I think an exhalation is more more common than an inhalation. Inhalation, yeah. But I could see it happening. Yeah. Yeah. Still creepy. Creepy as hell. Could you Get imagine? Out. Like, well, well, you can, yeah, you can I imagine. Can, I, <laughs> yeah, it's. But how how frightening would that be? That that um, is super frightening. Thank you, anonymous. That was a that yeah. was a nice little. I I like I like read it and I was like, this is the one that we need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good. Is, yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. a nice. And you definitely, know, we've had two great like warm warm yes. stories. Warm, and, and here's and a I'm chilling like, one. Yeah. I'm like, hey. yeah, a nice creepy. And you hear that a lot in long term care. 
the ghost stories that come out of yes because these are people who who know the end is coming mm -hmm. and and so they have a lot of preoccupation with it there's a lot of invitation of the thought of it and so the spiritual um atmosphere of those facilities oftentimes is so ripe for spiritual encounters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so even people who are skeptics or even people who don't have a lot of um stock in the supernatural find themselves in those places just a little more reverent <laughs> yeah paying a little more mm -hmm. attention and being a little more open to odd things happening exactly yep. um but yeah send in more of your stories um yeah. i'd love to hear i'm endlessly fascinated by people who work in hospice yes um well in hospitals anybody. all together yeah. the medical field is is full of paranormal experiences and a lot of people write them off because they, they come up with answers like exactly. that. Exactly. They come up with answers like, oh, well, you know, it's a last uh, response yeah, going to the body. It's, it's a death rattle. It's yeah. these things. It's like, yeah, but uh, it doesn't shake off the, the, the sheer terror of, of right. moments like that. It's like science it can be yeah. science, but it's still creepy at its base, you know? So, um, but yes, thank you, Anonymous, for sending that in. Yes. Send us more of your stories. Please do. Um, if you have a ghost story that you want to send us, you can send it to hauntedcitypodcast.com or, well, ghostmail at hauntedcitypodcast.com. Um, we love getting all the ghost mail. We, um, mm -hmm. we really love this series. It's um, It's been really nice to just catalog all of these oh absolutely you know, and it's, it's, it's helped us so much because we've been able to put all of these stories into a, a larger framework of understanding mm -hmm. because we've had stories that we had never encountered before and then other people come in with you know shading for that story and now mm -hmm. we now we have a, a, a new form of yep. spirit or entity or an interaction that we had never even thought of before so please keep them coming because they do help us in our in our search mm -hmm. for a paranormal identity exactly absolutely so, um but yes yeah, so thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode and my name is madison timmons i'm chris susie and stay spooky y'all <laughs>